All right, and we are live. Hey, everybody. I'm thinking about doing a new series here. I uh, I really like random map scripts, but it seems like I can't churn them out fast enough to keep everybody happy. So I always got to go and hunt down other random map scripts that people make and map scripts that may look interesting. I I have no hesitation in reaching out to the creator to see if we could talk about. So I've got Pure Savagery with me. He is in the voice channel, and we are looking at a map that he made. Uh, he made it for the RMS Cup 2 random map contest. contest. He's a new scripter. Uh, he's not all, all jaded from previous uh, scripting contest experience, so he's young, he's full of energy, and he's going to tell us what he wants to do with this map, and uh, we're going to go over it together, see if we can give him some tips and, uh, and help him get the best technical score possible. So, hello, Pure Savagery. Hello. I'm also in the chat. Yes. So, where do I need to look here? Uh, tell me a little bit about this map and um, and what you're going for with it. Yeah. So, ideally, the map is uh, more more of an aggressive map, despite the almost walls on the player with the wood lines. Um, the, you can kind of see with the... Like I've been calling them arms because <laughs> they're not quite our, our walls. And if you add more players, it does look like a tentacle monster. So it's just arms. Mm -hmm. um, but they're three tiles wide. I've debated doing two, but I feel like that would be too easy to chop through. Like it still has to be deniable almost. Um, and the the main point is you do have your main starting resources, but you don't have any extras. Um, they're like you get your your main stone and your main gold. But you don't get the medium and far golds, uh, because the goal of the map is to fight over the golds and stones in between the two players. Mm -hmm. um, and so they'll want to try and deny that as much as possible, because you don't want to just give your opponent free resources. So ideally, if you're able to get control of both of those sides, your your opponent is kind of screwed a little bit. Um, but it'll be hard to, you know, if the other player just goes full on one side, you have to match that, and it's always easy to sneak away and get the other side at that point, especially with the fact that you can chop through the wood lines. Um, there is also some hunt out in the, like, on the outside there, just mm -hmm. packs of deer, um, which you can always take, but of course, you know, it's not exactly protected deer. Right, so. there's, there's a certain risk involved with it. Now, um... Exactly. And I can do a couple different generations, too. And what I really like about this is, number one, you've got some different themes available. So mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. That's always a plus. It's not the most important thing, but it's yeah. just one of those things that you can tell that somebody cares if they added it. Well, um, I thought it was cool. <laughs> I was like, and, oh, I can do this. Let's go. So let me ask you, it looks like the player configuration is is randomized, which is good. Nice. we got mm -hmm. a desert. we got a desert here. So it's essentially... Um, and then of course we have the, an Arctic forest as well. So can you, what's your, what's your feel for it? Is it possible if you're playing this in a one V one situation to be able to predict where your opponent is based on where you start on the map? Yeah. So that is, it does, it's always going to generate them opposite of you. Um, okay. so at the very least you're going to be separated by, you know, on each side, that group of resources. Um, unless you're doing like 2v2 and then you'll still have the extra resources between teams. I may change that. So it's, I, I think you do need that though in a team environment. Um, basically you can give those extra resources to your pocket and then, you know, as long as you defended him enough, he can then counter back. But of course the enemy will have the same thing. Okay, that's that's neat. So have you done much work? Do you want me to do like a team game generation, like a four player or a six player or an eight player generation and look at it? Or is that something that you're still you're still working I've got on? I got up to four. Yeah. So four works. Uh six does not I get some it fails to properly generate the, the wood lines in between the sections. Um and you'll kind of see that if you go up to six, but four should be okay. Um Okay. Yeah, so it looks like with the four players, you ba you have these piles of resources yeah. that are in between each of the players, actually. It's sort of, it's yeah. like a spin like the wheel, if you will, alternating. Stone, so. What's that? Uh, just if you go to the top section, 
Uh, yeah, at the top and the bottom failed to generate the secondary stones. There should be two sets of stones and two sets of gold, uh, and it's not getting the second stone. And that's that's where mm. the issues start to come in on the bigger map sizes, is the slices get so small that it's the rules I have set up uh, are not generating okay. things properly. And so I've kind of got to dig through that and figure it out as the map size gets bigger. But I'd say four players is playable. Six is definitely not uh, due to bugs with the map. So, um, if I had to guess, and let me know, let me know how good this guess is, uh, is, because I'm not that great of a guesser. But just the whole concept of having these alternating players is pretty cool, and having these little pockets is pretty cool, in my opinion. If I had to guess here, is this like uh, you're creating two sets of player lands, and then you're placing the player objects mm -hmm. on a certain land ID? And then on the exactly. other land ID, you're putting the different secondary golds and stones. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Um, now, took how, me a bit, bit to figure it out. How are you? Um, how are you guaranteeing these gaps here? Is this like? Do you have another land that's constrained to within certain borders that overrules these player lands, or what? Um, how do you get so this, the gaps this between gap the here? edge of the arm and the edge of the map? Yep. Okay, so that is, there's, in the script, um, let me go pull it up, there is, so the way that the spacing ends up working is I am generating a, a second, like, in the train generation, I'm, I'm creating a secondary land, um, and then it has spacing to other train types, and you can set that spacing, and that's what's generating the arm distance. Um, oh, as the map size okay. goes up, I do increase the length of the arms a little bit, and then later I generate forests, and those have a spacing to the arms of at least 20, because I don't want it to be too easily wallable. Right. I don't want pe people to just wall it off and go, all right, I can boom. But if, I mean, that's their choice. If they want to do that, they can, but then they give up all the resources. So, so yeah, a, a couple things. These are some great things that you're, that you're thinking about. A couple things. Have you considered making the lengths of the arms random? Like within a range? Yeah. Yep, within uh, a range. Yep. Uh, is I that have, the case? Is that, that the case here? No, um that right you've now done they're it? Hard -coded. They're hard coded. Do you want yeah. to make them random or do you want them to be the same length and why? Um I think there needs to be a I I I'm totally fine with making them random. I think there needs to be a minimum length, 100% because the whole point of it is you you kind of do have these arms as I want it like mm -hmm. you it's a, okay. You can either chop through if you if your opponent lets you if you can make it through and that kind of creates you quick access to the secondary groups of resources or you can try and walk all the way around, which makes like you can do it. But in the long run, you probably do want to chop through because of the distance required to go around the arms. Um, so it's like you'll probably start out early game. Any military, you, you will have to send around these. But if you chop through, then it's a lot shorter. And of course, if your opponent is doing similar, you know, it, it makes the fights faster at that point. So if you if the minimum length is too short, it's too easy to walk around. Mm -hmm. is, I guess, my point. Okay. Um, Fair but yeah, enough. I still think it'd be reasonable to have like a min max and then just generate within that range. Yeah, it's it's just an idea that I that I had looking at it. I can tell you that judges tend to like maps that are less predictable. Maps where Absolutely. if if you don't scout something, then you're unable to make a game winning decision. So gotcha. there's that whole decision making but a lot of it depends on scouting now this is going to be the pros so they're going to scout right. it right but maybe the pros aren't going to be able to pick their sibs based on the configuration that they think will happen right maybe gotcha. one sib sense. maybe one sib is better if the arms are long and another sib is or in that same sib is or another sib would be better if the arms were short and if the arms were a certain length the pros might be able to calculate and say well, if I know that the arms are only, uh, I don't know, 100 tiles long, then I know that, just to pick a sieve, like the Britons are the sieve that I want. But if the arms right. are 150, then Britons are totally not going to work. So um, I like doing that kind of stuff to keep players on their toes. The players don't like it, but I like it. <laughs> um, so it's it's all really a matter of, of what you want to do and where you believe that that risk should lie. I always, I, if there's something that I can do, that affects that screws everybody over equally. It's something yeah. that I will definitely do because I, 
I think I, I believe in new things. I believe in challenging people. I believe in throwing people curveballs equally. And um, it can be kind of tough. Maybe sometimes players grumble about it. But at the end of the day, I think the viewers are, are all the better off for it. So it's just something yeah. to think about. I don't want to tell you how to how to do your thing. Just to have a conversation about some of the different decisions. Now, you're familiar with the map Habu, right, by Krasini. If I generated it here, so you can see it on the stream to make sure. There is another concept for Habu, which you might, which you might appreciate for use in, um, in your map. Note that there is a layer of unwallable terrain in a ring around the edge of the map. Mm -hmm. Did you consider? Did you consider making the map unwallable? Oh. Yeah, uh, outside the arms. That would be yeah. okay, hundred percent. Because that that is something I, I I want this to be an aggressive map, and okay. I figure the incentive of the resources would be enough for most people. But at the same time, just yeah, adding um, what's another map? Uh, there's another one that's just a circle, and then the players start like halfway in the circle. And then there's an unwallable train, and all the gold and stones are outside the circle. I don't remember the map name. Oh, I, I, I've played it before. I think it's enclosed by Cruzini. I think let that's me right. yeah. let me see if I can generate it here. Tell me if I get the right one. This one. Uh, let's see here. It has a little bit of stream lag. I know. Yep, yep, that is the one. Because, yeah, they can't wall on that, uh, like, road-type surface. It's not quite a road, but... Uh, it's DLC rock terrain. Gotcha. And, yep, they can't wall on it. So this kind of stuff, you see this kind of stuff pop up in maps all the time to try to make them more aggressive. Drives people like me crazy, people who love arena, people who just love to wall up and do a monk rush or wall and boom. But, um... yeah. It seems like this is quite popular right now. I I don't think you could I don't think you could screw up from incorporating this, but again, you know, like it is your mistake. There there may be certain sibs that are power or not not mistake, it's your choice. Right. Um there are certain sibs that could be powered up, there'd be certain sibs that power down by the ability to wall off, and that's all your choice. And maybe you maybe you make that random too. I don't wanna like plant too many I don't want you to I'm not trying to get you to, to make hyper random here, um, <laughs> but it's just something, it's an idea. It's something to think about. Yeah. Jaws00 zero zero yeah. is in chat. Hey, Jaws00, zero zero, we are going over, uh, we are going over separated yeah, by I pure to, savagery. I, I, mean, I wasn't going to say anything or anything like that. Yeah, so, it's just what I came up with. Like, I was like, oh man, I have to send this file over. What do I call it? <laughs> so... Uh, I like the the relic distribution seems to be relatively fair from looking at this, which is good. You've got some nice big forests in the back, but if you had if you had a ring of unwallable terrain around the outside, let's say that the outside had the ring of of forest. I don't know if you necessarily want to do this, but let's say that you somehow um, did make that ring of unwallable terrain, then you would have a lot more margin to play with with the length of these arms right because it wouldn't matter if this arm was if the gap between the edge of the map and the arm was three tiles or if it was 20 tiles right, um it would be unwallable it would be unwallable anyway so yeah this is something to to think about yeah so john zero zero is comparing this map to hideout and i want to ask you i'm sure you've played hideout pure mm -hmm. savagery before Tell me how this map is different from Hideout. It's it I, I I have when thinking about it, it is very similar to Hideout. Um, instead of Palisade walls, you have the the wood. Um, but the main thing is in Hideout, I believe you have like guaranteed extra resources outside your base, um, and most people will put a TC or two on those. Whereas this one, the guaranteed resources are not necessarily easily accessible from your base, like Hideout is, um, given that they're in between you and the other player in you know, relatively the same distance, but you have the same obstacle on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's 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 similar to Hideout, absolutely. Um, it's just where those extra resources are is going to cause that aggression. Um, whereas on Hideout, it's like I said, you kind of, you, you can wall off one side and kind of just guarantee that you protect your resources at that point. 
So, okay, yeah, I think that's a good explanation. It's it. I could imagine it being much more aggressive than hideout in the sense that if if you go fast castle on hideout and your opponent has like archers, you can put down a second town center in your base. You could put down two or three town centers. You could be you could be booming, or you could put down just a siege workshop and then pressure your opponent. And you could really take back your secondary resources without too much trouble. But in this yeah. case, your secondary resources are outside of your what would reasonably be considered a wallable, protectable base. Yeah. Um, so uh, Jaws00 is asking, does it have 16 pockets with 8 players? So he's still working on that. We looked at the 4-player configuration, and we'll show that again real quick for the viewers who are who are just tuning in now. Number of players, four, and map size, medium. So as you can see, uh, it's got pockets in between the players. He's working on that. Where's this player's, where's green's gold? Yeah, see, it's it's things like that, that once so, you go more than two, it starts to break. Um, I also had a lot of issues with sheep generating on the opposite side of the wood lines. Um, so they have a pretty, mm. uh, yeah, so it, it's things like that. I got to figure okay. out, you increase the size of the circle in the middle so that you get wider chunks, basically. Um, I just need to fine tune that so that the chunks are, are big enough. Okay. Uh, if I may give you some advice, have you tried or considered making... I don't know how this how this would work. Maybe there's some reason why it wouldn't work. Have you considered making it so that um, the other player lands that are being created, where these minerals are, are mm -hmm. are are from a different terrain? So it appears in this case that this is yeah. desert. Yeah. Have you considered making this a different terrain over here, where these where these gold and stone are, and then specifying that the sheep spawn on the same terrain as your original land ID. I'm assuming you're placing these land, these sheep according to land ID. So maybe that's a better way of doing it. Um, I totally what... forgot to, that that was possible. And I ran into that issue and I used the land ID trick even. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what I was using it for, but when I was first trying to place the secondary resources, um, I ran into some issues getting them to be in the right, right spot and I resolved it with the land ID thing, but I could also use that the opposite direction with the sheep for the players. Um, basically, you know, okay. It's possible cool. or another possibility. Yeah. I've never used place on specific land ID before, so I don't know how it works. It's not part of my scripting methodology, but mm -hmm. even if these terrains did have to be the same for whatever reason, for terrain layering purposes of getting your arms to work properly, um, yep. You might be able to put uh, placeholders, invisible placeholders, on the land ID that is not the same as your town center or villagers. Yeah. So where you're putting down the golds and the stones, you could put down all these little flags and space them two tiles apart or something like that. Um, and that would prevent other stuff. And then you could tell the sheep to avoid those flags, the actor area of those flags. So gotcha. actor areas are a very powerful tool. And random map scripting. They're complicated and they're difficult to use, and you can go absolutely crazy with them. But if you if you can master actor areas, you could basically make anything. So they're they're very useful. Because it's your intention that the that all the player's sheep should start on this in the same slice. pie slice, which I think is the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, I think players need basic access to their food and gold and stone and berries and all yeah, that good stuff yeah. uh, to make sure Especially they can get up given in mages. the distance. Like, if it were to spawn on the other side, you know, they do have to go all the way around to get those sheep. And, it like, I remember for a while, Arena used to occasionally spawn a sheep outside the Arena walls. Um, and then people would just go and snipe them if you didn't realize it was outside your wall fast enough. They'd be like, they just send their scout to your base right away, and then you're down, you know, two sheep or whatever. It's like, I don't, I don't want that, you know? It's like, laming is allowed, but it shouldn't be laming because I genned the map wrong. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, let's see, what else? So, looking at this, I can tell you right off the bat that uh, 
Is there? Well, let me ask. Let me let me actually just ask a question first uh, before I before I start making statements. Why are all these golds and stones in the same place? In the pie so slice, is I, that intentional? It to a certain extent. Um, I didn't want them to be like. I don't want you to be able to tower the golds and stones from your side of the um, wood line, right? So like. I don't want them to be able to deny that from the other side of the wood line. So I wanted a certain distance from the wood line. Um, and then that kind of just squishes them in a little bit, especially since I'm using it's the way those are placed. They're still placed as if a, like it's the minimum distance to player. Right. Um, okay. It's still wallable to it or towerable to a certain extent. Um, and so I, I can increase that distance, and I have. Um, I just wanted them to be still semi close to each other. So it's like if you if you do get in there and you you know castle that that your your re those resources are yours. You've taken them. Um, the, if they're more spread out, it's a little harder to control all of them at once. And I guess that could be a good thing as well, uh, depending on how easy you want it to be to take those resources. Right. Um, I think that when resources are more distributed, it it nerfs the the impact of towers and castles generally on the outcome of the game. And I think most people would agree that it becomes less snowbally if the resources yeah. are further apart. Because if some guy plants a castle here and plants a castle here that's two castles you know it's not going to be easy but let's say let's say it does happen that two castles mm -hmm. are put up here i mean one castle is denying and securing a lot of resources for one player so jaw yeah. zero zero yeah. actually says he thinks it's good like this you could make the argument that it is good like this right there are two of them it it, it would be tough to get a castle up on both of them mm -hmm. to secure both of them uh i feel like it could be a little bit more spaced out here and I'm looking at it looks like these these the stone and this gold does not have a very high um, avoidance to each other. Yeah. Um, make them a little bit more spread out would be my recommendation. But it's really up to you. It's all about what you what you want. Um, yeah. And the kinds of strategies that you want to see. If you want to see towering and castling, then having the resources be close together is a good thing. If you want it to be more about mobility and units and such, having them be further apart is generally better. That. Yeah. So it's it's One really your decision. That I did try, um, and if you look at the player town centers, the I think the standard stone is five. Um, I want to say, and I gave them four, and I almost gave them three, because at that point, you know, it's a it's a limited amount of stone it doesn't provide them enough stone to go two castles. You're short of, you know, buying it or finding mm. one of the two tile stones out there. And I did think about that and I'm like, I don't, it prevents, you know, especially if you go towers early, it does prevent you absolutely from dropping a castle at that point. Um, and so at that point you can't get the castle until you get, you know, secure or take one of those secondary resources. Yeah, um, that's, that's a good thought. You, you know, I hadn't thought about that. I didn't notice yeah, the I, four stones here. Mm -hmm. I, there is a situation that I think could happen on this map if both players are pretty evenly fighting on both sides. You could run out of gold and stone, and then it turns into a trash war over the rest of the resources if it's an even fight on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, it's in theory possible, but I, I think at one point it would start to snowball before that. So we got uh, Cesar in chat. Welcome, Cesar. Um, so Jaws Zero Zero says he thinks that these resources being in the same in, in close together makes the feudal play better because if you don't contest in feudal, the castle drop would be meta. Strong. Yeah. So you can definitely understand the arguments for or against it. I still think these resources are a little close, but yeah. if they were I, all I'm within range, like where I'm pointing on my screen, like if they were all within a 15 tile radius let's say or 10 tile radius of the center of this pie i think that would be just perfect um yeah you've got some just some gen general big forests here did you need to do anything special with the relics at all or are they just no, kind of standard I, I relics straight up pulled that from setness's guide oh so. okay 
yeah, I, I didn't do anything super special there because um, I know relics can be really important. I didn't want to mess it up, basically. It's like if, if, if relics are all, you know, the way I view it is a lot of maps have relics in standard posi positions and things like that. And then players will go, you know, Lithuanians, and then they know exactly where those relics are going to be. And you have to, you know, if the other player doesn't realize, especially in my ELO, people are like, oh, Lithuanians, whatever. They're not thinking about the Civ bonus. Pro players absolutely would. Um, but then, you you know, the Lithuanian guy just grabs all the relics and it's over. So I was like, you know what, let's, I want them to be, you know, standard. I do see an issue, though, like with the one in the right hand corner there, it's generated like behind that wood line. It's not enclosed, but I should make sure that's not possible. Ah, uh, it's not a bit. I, I'm not, not too worried about that. I think it'll be fine. Um, a lot of deer out here. Uh, what's to stop somebody from picking Mongols and going like 16 pot yeah. scouts and just overrunning? The opponent. And that is one thing I wanted to talk about. I could not get them. So I had to use tight clumping to get them to generate, like, at all properly. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, I, I figured it didn't really matter because they wander. But, uh, like, looking at the mini map at this point in time before they wandered, it looks gross just because you can see the square that they're generating in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I think it's like six deer, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Six deer per clump um, or per group. And I think that might be a little too much. I could I, like I could I see know. a pro like pushing this clump in. If they got this generation, a pro yeah. like the Viper would totally come is... up here and push six deer in his Mongols and yeah. go like sixteen pop scouts and overrun everything. So what you could do, and we talked about this, is you could actually make the deer clumps you could make the number of deer random in them. Uh, Mongols are considered very good when there's three to there's four deer. Of but you could do oh, okay. something as like two to five deer, you know, yeah. randomly. Could be anywhere in there. So that, again, pros aren't picking their civilizations based on they think that one civ will be completely OP on the map. Because then you only see one civ. And when the judges evaluate it, the judges are going to look at these deer and they're going to be like, oh, Mongols every time. That's yeah. a loss of points in variety. Um, mm -hmm. So the deer are the deer are quite heavy. Yeah, is my impression. Maybe chat feels differently, but this seems like I, a lot I, of deer to me. Yeah, it it is. Um, and I like I said, I was I had issues getting them to generate, and I think I just left it static because I didn't want to touch it. But I 100% um, Mongols would be kind of busted. <laughs> but you know, especially given that if the other player goes for their deer, the the Mongols can just scout rush them. I mean, then again, we've seen we've seen maps that have been played competitively just because they've been around for forever. Like how many times have we seen the pros play ghost rush? Yeah. Um, and pick Britons every time or ghost, ghost Lake. Sorry, not ghost rush. Yeah, that would sheep. be even spookier uh, <laughs> and go after, go after all those sheep. So um, now having said that though, the Mongols are like 40% faster hunting rate, which is insane. And hunted meat is already the majority of the meat on an age yep. of empires map, or the majority of, of the food, I should say. On an Age of Empires map, so hopefully we can. Um, hopefully you'll, you'll think about that, and because I think the judges might consider the Mongols based on the amount of hunt that's here. But again, yeah. it's the contest is not really. None of the parameters are very well defined in terms of I what's acceptable and what's not acceptable, which is unfortunate. Um, Said here, you know, give us a map. All right, for us nothing. I'll submit it. Well, then you'll just get torpedoed by having a poor competitiveness, and they'll say, "I'm sorry." Go, go watch, go watch, and see what kind of maps the pros are already playing. But um, I just am trying to help you based on my experience because uh, I don't want you getting torpedoed by by some something that maybe you or I, as noobs, look at and we're like, "Oh yeah, that's fine," and uh, trying to think of all the things that these guys would think about. Now, I want to talk about this center here. This is boring, man. You got to do something with the center, don't you think? I mean, it's fine. It's, it's wood. But nobody's going to chop here, right? Nobody is there. Can you help me understand if there's any situation where you would build your lumber camp, like, right here and chop just in the middle of that big old uh, starfish? Probably not. Because you want to get Maybe. through on one of the arms pretty quickly. So Unless you, you're gonna just go straight through to the enemy player, but that's that would take way too long. You'd lose. I mean, it, I guess maybe it's possible that somebody could have this insane, like they 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 wall here. Oh man, 
That's so bad. This the scenario editor is not good at placing walls, and they wall kind of no, like can this. I see that. It's like the the shadows one way, and then it just changes. Yep. So they do like some kind of Khmer fast castle build. We could try that. Like once you get this to where you want it to be, we could try to get some guys to test it for you. But somebody could maybe somebody could wall small like that, and build their lumber camp here. Oops. And um and go FC. Is that is that a viable strategy on this map? I don't know. I'm not good enough at Age of Empires to know. But is that something that you considered as a possibility? I did not. Maybe somebody walls just really small like this and goes FC as Khmer or Franks or something and then goes Knights. I don't know what the yeah. right answer is. I maybe it's completely in, uh, not viable and I'm just I'm just crazy. Jaw zero zero here, yeah. bail me out. Tell me if FC into Knights is viable on this map. I don't know. All right, what do you think? I think it's possible, and if the enemy scouted it, they could wall, like, uh, provided, you know, because we talked about earlier, you know, unwallable terrain. If that's not there, and you can wall to the sides, I think you just get walled in, and then they take the extra resources. Mm -hmm. So they're a little bit, I mean, unless you go and take those instantly after hitting castle. Instead of, like, an FC Knights, you go FC, yeah, castle drop, or TC drop, is, and take those extras. But, of course, you have to get there, and you're walled in. So I don't know. What Could about you, you do want variety in play? You don't want, like you were saying earlier, the same strategy every time. Interesting. Jaw Zero Zero says I would play it like this: FC into Castle Drop, just make hideout from this map. Go Cox. So he thinks that there is a lot of, that the map has a lot to in common with um, with hideout. It looks like. So I, yeah. from what I'm reading, what I understand is maybe Jaws Zero Zero would attempt the FC based on these small walls here. Right. Could be, could be a bad idea. Could be disastrous. Um, you know, this gold and this stone, they are exposed. Um, hmm. So maybe what could what could you? I mean, what could you do to? mitigate the risk or mitigate the risk of somebody going FC. What are some of your ideas? Uh, I think you said one thing about allowing your opponent to wall you in over here, giving yeah. up those resources. Well, it, it, that's, it, yeah. If we don't make it unwallable, in theory, the opponent could see that you're, you're just like, okay, you're, you've done small walls. You're going to confine yourself to that area. And if they scout that, they could just, you know, wall you in um, and, or, you know, start placing, towers up on the side the opposite side of the wood line uh if you're anywhere near there hmm. um all right um it's just but... something to think about it's a hard question i i challenge jaw zero i don't I have no idea how good jaw zero zero even is but um if he's not a similar ranking we'll give him some handicap or we'll give me some handicap <laughs> and uh we'll we'll test it for you when you're ready so when you've got the script yeah. the way that you want it We'll just test it, because that's too hard of a question to answer, theoretically, I think. All right. Now, I do kind of like that you tore out the center. <laughs> what do you think about this? Yeah, this is my next question. I started doodling here, and I was like, well, what could we do with this? What do you think? Does this give you any ideas? That makes it, like, super... If you, if you chop through that, you know, you're... If, and they're on the other side, you know, that could make this into a very messy map. You know, if both players chop through. Um, Dave was just casting a game where they had three, uh, it was three pools of water in a line down the middle. And they had wood lines around them. It was like three or four tiles thick. And one player did, they both built their, it's the only wood on the map though. So you couldn't go to like opposite, you know, forests or anything. Um, and they one player got through the wood line, built a dock, and then used galleys on the other person's wood line. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So similar situation here. What you know, regardless if you put water or uh, just more land in the middle, it, it allows if you're both on the middle of the uh, wood line there, it's whoever gets through first can deny the other person's resources. So Cesar is asking a question here. We got a question in chat. Are there any Civ variant commands like if in the game are Mongols or Mayans to generate less sheep? No, unfortunately not, Cesar. You cannot program the map to detect the presence of a certain Civ 
and then change how the map is scripted based on whether or not that sieve appears. Um, that would be a neat feature, especially with the devs. It seems like they want to pump a new L a new DLC out every six months and make 20 more bucks off of everybody in the community. Um, they keep on coming up with sieves, and so it's harder and harder to balance all of our maps according to all the sieves and make sure that no one sieve is broken because they keep adding more things. Uh, but no, that, that logic does not exist. So that's why when you make a map, you got to make sure it works for every civilization. But again, like randomness in the map is really your biggest weapon. Because if you can't predict how many deer are going to be out here, and you pick, and let's say that you pick, you pick Mongols hoping for six deer and there end up being two, then um, you're going to be in a tough spot. So, uh, Jaw00 says, I would make the outer wood more balanced for each side. Yeah, I hadn't said anything about that yet. And I'm sure he's still working on it. But I do yeah, agree I, with the outer wood thing, and I think he does too. And it, it'll look different, actually, if he puts a ring of unbuildable terrain around the outside. So he'll probably have less space to begin with. Yeah, I, I did have the second version, which I made it so that it's got like 10 to 12 um, groups of wood. That uh, And because there's just more groups, it, it's more even as far as where each player gets the extra wood. Um, Mm -hmm. Just generates a little bit differently there. These boar look a little bit far. That could be pretty fun. So, is it your intention to force the players to get loom based on the distance of the boar? We... Um, I, if I remember right, I was just reading the standard guide and like distance, and I think I just left it at that. Mm -hmm. Um, let me see, boar. fourteen to twenty-four tiles away from the town center. That could be a good yeah, thing, got... right? If you wanted to. If let's say that you wanted to encourage feudal aggression and you like built all of these features into the map to make it aggressive in feudal age, if you can do something to incentivize the players to get loom earlier so that somebody doesn't show up at somebody else's wood line and kill four villagers in feudal age and have it be over, yeah. so the game is less snowbally, in my view, that's a good thing. It just looks far because it's diagonal. Ah, okay. Well, there's some kind of set circular placement. It's a new command you can use with min to max distance to players. I can't use it because I, I'm all about actor areas. But it could be something that Pure Savagery wants to, maybe wants to try. Yeah, I don't um, have it set on the bore. I think I'm using it for some other stuff, though. So anyway, a pocket here in the center. It could be cool, right? It could, it would do, it would give your map, um, it would give it one more thing like there's there'd happen. be one more thing that could happen, right? There's just one there's one more chance of variety here. Yeah. Um and you'd have to make it worth it somehow. You maybe you could like I, I don't know, maybe maybe there could be a pond in the middle with lots of fish. Probably not though, because I don't think you have any way of making it so that they only chop through one or something, or without it affecting the rest of the arms. That could be fun though. Or you could put relics in here, or you could put even more gold piles in here. Um, you know, something that if somebody controlled it, it wouldn't be the end of the game, but it would be an advantage, right? So people would want to fight over it. Yeah. Hey, Yo-Yo Dude is here. Yo-Yo Dude is going to help me test this out as soon as um, Pure Savagery is ready. Yeah. And uh, Yo-Yo plays at about a 1500 level. This is Pure Savagery's map separated. He's going to submit it for the World, um, the RMS Cup 2 map contest sponsored by Microsoft and uh, I'm giving him some ideas and talking to him about it it looks like one of the stones failed to spawn here if okay, I had I to guess to increase that distance if I had to guess it would be that you're using min distance group placement too much maybe not um, I don't want to look at the code because it doesn't matter what's in the code we're looking at it from a high level here you are the expert about what's in the code right we're just giving you I ideas that's all yeah, it's the max distance to players is too small, is what it is. Um, combined with a min distance replacement. Yeah, see, you will know. Um, so I can increase that. So I, I will. Yeah. We like we anyway. So yeah, we were just talking about some ideas possibly that he could use for this map. Um, could make it could give it a little bit more variety. Maybe you can figure out a way of making something happen going on in the center, but he doesn't have to. All right. Um. Does anybody else have any other ideas about the map or, you know, get uh, pure savagery thinking about it?
all these different perspectives. This will help him submit a better map for the contest, decrease the chances of getting blindsided by some small technical thing that somebody didn't like, which does happen. Yeah. I, it was, um, especially, again, with how vague it uh, was. Like, with, with the description. It just says submit a map. So Yo-Yo. <laughs> Yo-Yo says add stone walls like hideout. Yo-Yo, you're such a troll. Get out of here. <laughs> No, this whole yeah, map am, is supposed to be about aggression. You see all these resources that are like on the other side of the arm here? You're supposed to fight over that. No stone walls, yo-yo. Although I do, I am an arena clown like yo-yo. I do like, <laughs> I do like my stone walls. See, if uh, I, I, I basically only play team games with a friend, and so whenever we get arena, um, see, I'm a nomad clown. I just play nomad over and over, uh, all the different nomad types. So. Um, but I, I will go Sicilians and then uh, try and I, they they get the donjon right, and then you just yep donjon their gate down and drop a castle inside, because um, they have the faster building castle. So it's it's yeah a lot of people see the castle and then just GG and at least at my elo I feel oh. like sixteen hundred players will play it out and I'll lose. <laughs> so Jaws zero zero is stating something as well. Add terrain masking. It's not pretty enough. Yes. Um, are you familiar with that concept? I'd completely forgotten about that, but he's right. Um, yep. If there's something you can do to beautify it, beauty is not as important as the so-called competitiveness of the map, but assuming that, um, that maps are, uh, you know, all other things being equal, if two maps are roughly equal in competitiveness and strategic variety, then the map that's prettier is going to win. Yeah. Um, I did. I have not done it yet. Um, but it, I feel like looking at how it's done, it shouldn't be that hard. I just need to find the right tiles that match and make it look pretty. You know, I don't want snow tiles on this one. <laughs> so, um, okay. Anybody got anything else for pure savagery? Any other ideas? Oh, random hills says Cesar. Yeah. See, these guys are full of ideas. Um, I'm not seeing any hills. He's right. Uh, there, is there a reason there are no hills? No, just I haven't touched it yet. I so the one thing, um, like what is a good because they, they it's the, the way the hills are done is to, that I know of is not percentage based. It's you have to specify a number of piles. I don't want to overdo it or underdo it. Like, is there? I couldn't find anything written that was like, okay, here's a good range for like a normal number of hills. And I guess I could just generate it and test. But uh, yeah, it, look, it's honestly it's not very helpful about that. I mean, the, there's a lot of a lot of old code and some of it's pretty primitive but basically what you do is you set a number of tiles and then you set a number of groups and then you either scale by I think it's size or you scale by groups so it's ultimately that scaling command that you add that makes mm -hmm. the number of tiles you specified work on larger map sizes than what you originally developed it for and if it yeah. doesn't quite scale properly you can add a conditional statement that basically says, if the map is this size, do this. If the map is that size, do this. And so on and so forth. Yeah, you have to test it to get it okay. to be exactly perfect, unfortunately. There's no land percentage for hills. And always enable balanced elevation because the hills It'll are biased toward the, bottom. Toward the yeah. bottom. And even now, they still are biased toward the bottom. Like if you had some yeah. lands to seed a higher elevation, if you will, in, in each of the corners, for example, then it would actually like pull some of the hills up toward the top. But try it without all that complexity first. And see if it's needed from there. See yep. if it's needed, yep. Um, but I think, I think he's on a, a good path here. I like this. Once you've got this where you want it, let us know, Pure Savagery, and we'll help you test it. Always looking to no, make I... friends. Um, Yo-Yo is asking how many boars... There Just, are two uh, boards. Sh yeah, should be two. Two <laughs> boards per player. I'm not confident in my own map here. <laughs> um, oh, no, it's fine. We're not. We're not here to break you down. We're here to give you ideas. That's all. Um, eight sheep, two boars, um, six deer, and then you have slightly less stone, the same amount of main gold, and your secondaries are in this other pocket on the other side of this arm of trees. Can there be elephant? Yo, yo, what's with you? What do you want elephants for? He could always do a resource delta on these boars to uh, increase the amount of food that they give. So they give the same amount of food as an elephant. 
Um, however, elephants attack faster, and they are more damaging. But he could upgrade uh, an elephant into a boar so that a boar was just as damaging as an elephant, but had the appearance of a boar. So it's really all about what he wants. Yeah. That's a bit past what I know how to do. I know how to say I, well, I know where the docks are, but I've not messed with it yet. Ellie more chunks, says Yo-Yo. Exactly. <laughs> well, if you have any questions about that, you could let me know, or the guys in the scripting server are really good, too. Yeah, um, everyone's been super helpful. They're so actually the best. Um, but I like helping people a lot. So hopefully you've found the session informative. If anybody has any other ideas, you can send Pure Savagery. You can ping him in um, the modding and map support channel of the server and that's where we're going to go and post our feedback on the map after we've tested it and uh, the kind of the goal here is maybe we'll do a series where we'll help people develop their maps right now there's a lot of activity because there's a map contest going on so it's probably going to be sporadic the amount of activity that we have and that sort of thing but it could be good for us as a community and the community is always looking for new maps to try out for community games too but they generally have to be eight player compatible Yeah. So Absolutely. right now I'm working on uh, Flow to Gono, and I just redid all of the terrains today and a lot of the, the masking and such. So I'll give you an idea of like the sort of thing that you can do. And I'm working on Flow to Gono for Cesar. But this is the kind of thing that you can do with terrain masking. Let me give you a taste of what... Don't add... Oh, by the way, yeah, Jaws00 said don't add bushes everywhere like somebody else does. He's talking about me. But it's a desert map. So you can do some really yeah. amazing things with when playtest. Not today. I'm uh, already... Yeah, I've got to make some edits. So you can, you can do this kind of stuff with terrain masking. So this is desert gravel over desert. This is dirt over desert. This is, um, you know, green water and deep water over mangrove shallows. So you could really, oh, you could really go crazy. But just, this is, this is what... I think I think this is pretty close to what could be the standard for visual appeal. It's right. obviously it's not done yet. There's still got to be rocks for the tidal pools, but just to give you kind of an idea of what where you can go with these terrain maskings. But this is yeah, not yeah, awesome. this is not about me. This is about um uh pure savagery. So I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of what people do with random map scripting and make stuff look pretty. Oh, of course, um, yeah. All right. So let's go back and we'll generate his map one more time. And um, get any closing remarks. Oh, separated with eight players. Whoops, I <laughs> accidentally generated totally on breaks. the wrong side. Uh. All right, I gotta, I gotta go. I've got uh, a call that I was supposed to be in a little while ago, okay. but I really appreciate your time, Pure Savagery, and thanks yeah. everybody for tuning in. It's kind of a shorter stream today. Uh, we might stream later tonight, though. Um, tonight is Stargate night, but after that, after everybody leaves, hopefully we'll stream some more scripting or some playing. We'll see. But uh, hopefully we've given you a good direction, some ideas to think about for improvement, and um, uh, the next milestone, which th th I think we can offer, would be to test it, if you're interested. Yeah. So. No, 100% interested. Um... And that, that at the very least, even if the map doesn't get picked, I'll be like, somebody played on it. <laughs> exactly. Somebody somebody cared about it. It mattered to somebody. And most of the maps are not going to get picked for it. But yeah. that doesn't mean that they're not fun and that they're not worth playing on and that they're not worth thinking about and talking about. So either way, you're going to win from making a map for this contest. Yep. We'll increase my personal knowledge and go from there, you know for next time so all right thank you pure savagery uh thanks to everybody in chat for tuning in and i'm going to end the stream here and hopefully we'll uh we'll have another update on this map sometime soon